take his place among the game's greats in the Basketball Hall of Fame. His wife, Vanessa, shared some pics of the brand new Kobe exhibit at the Hall of Fame. And in addition, both Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan, who will join Kobe in the Hall, reflected on his career legacy. A fierce competitor um, and uh, uh, always demanding more of his team and his teammates than probably was possible, but he, he wanted that he wanted to win that much. He wanted it that much. And uh, 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 it was an honor to share the with him. I got to see Kobe. Um, he was very young and not as polished as everybody's got to see him when he was very vulnerable. We were both vulnerable. We were both young. And uh, we used to always interact with each other with that youthfulness, with that kid, that kid, uh, that kid persona. We always talked the, talked the game cracked a lot of jokes on each other, but at the end, it was two very fierce competitors. And um, there was our parallel. You know, as much as he wanted to win, I wanted to win at the same time. As much as he thought he was the best, I thought I was the best. I used to always crack on him and tell him he was too small to play. He used to always crack on me, tell him I was too small to guard him. It was a great, con it was a great conversation, great back and forth, and great competition. And, um, I don't think I'm the only one in here that thinks that uh, Kobe Bryant is, is fairly missed. Miss him every day. And uh, what he brought to not just to, not just to the game of basketball, but to sports, period. Rob, I know Kobe didn't always open up about accolades and obviously would have meant to pass MJ on the all-time scoring list, uh, the championships that you won with him. What, 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 what about a day like today? Um, you know, when you talk to certain people around this game and they always talk about their legacies, and the ultimate trophy is making it to the Hall of Fame. That's why you know your legacy is cemented in this game of basketball. And for Kobe not to be here and to have that uh, cherry on top of his legacy is, 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 is one of those things that we're going to regret seeing. Me, but I'm just happy that he, he got in there and he's, he has his family to represent him. He has a lot of former players to represent him. And he's going in, you know, as one of the best basketball players to ever played this game. And there's no doubt that anybody can argue with that. There's no doubt that we know what he brought to this game. And we had 20 years of that. And, you know, we only get so many years of certain great players, but we got 20 years. And think about it. How many guys go out with a 60-point game on your last game? And we had, we were there live. In his 20th year. Yeah, we were there live. Oh, and we got to, you know, experience that. You know, those are one of those life and once a lifetime moments you get experience, and I'm 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 so grateful to to Spectrum for allowing me to be there yeah. live because we usually be in the studio. Yeah, was, but so I just, I'm maybe. so happy we got to see that moment live. Yeah, it's one of those things you'll mm -hmm. never ever forget, James. I'm sure the emotion for you today is uh, a lot of different levels, right? Someone who loved Kobe knows knew Kobe, and and you're a member of that Hall of Fame class, so you know what it's like and what that day is like. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there's there's not too many days that that pass by where you're all of us Los Angeles Laker Nation where we ride down the freeway or we wake up or we watching a movie that might remind us of Kobe because we're still grieving yeah. no doubt but on a day like today is when you begin to start your journey on to celebrating Kobe more mm -hmm. we're always going to miss him but at some point we have to do what he wants us to do and that's continue his legacy so a Hall of Fame day is Rob. Rob is right. It cement your career. It's like the last thing you're gonna get. So I think you know on a day like today, you know we can remember all his greatness and we can start to you know celebrate what Vanessa wants for her kids now and what she wants to continue his legacy. We can you know can help that by starting to you know do what Kobe did. Did you know? He's, he was a great example, not in just basketball, but just in life. So on a day like today, you know, we, we began, we grieve still, but we began to celebrate uh, his legacy and all the things that, that he left us. You know, Rob, we talked to you on the podcast, yeah. Lake Show podcast the other day, and you were sharing some great Kobe stuff. Uh, the emotions for you today. I mean, when you played with Kobe, he was a kid uh, and he loved you and he was telling you a lot more later mm -hmm. <laughs> as he got, as he got older. So I know today's going to be going to be awesome, but also tough probably I, I would imagine. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's going to be tough because like I said before, you want to hear his words. Yeah. You know, we all can assume what he can say. We can all assume it because we never know what he's going to say. Like I never knew the things 
after we retired, the things he was going to say to me. So um, it's it's going to be interesting to see what everybody has to say. I know we all wish that he was there to uh, hear it in his words. And it's just going to be a sad day to sit there and watch that. You know, I, I joked about it earlier, like nobody really wants to hear Tim. You know, so Tim should <laughs> give his minutes to, to Vanessa, Vanessa and MJ, <laughs> you know. And, and so it, it's just going to be it's going to be exciting. It's going to be very heartwarming. I, I know, like you said, we're going to have some tissue next to us because it's going to be a, it's going to be a glorious, sad moment, right. and it's going to be so many emotions going through each and everybody who's watching that, especially for all of Kobe's teammates. Because, you know, I, me, I feel like I had a party yeah. putting him in Hall yeah, of Fame. Yeah, you do. So it's like every time you see all these players you play with, and you feel like you, you, a piece of you is with them when they go in the Hall of Fame. So I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to watch. I, I would be a bit surprised that. Kobe, knowing that he's going to go into the Hall of Fame at some point, I wouldn't be a bit surprised that he wrote something down. I don't know if it's a final speech, but it would be interesting to see if Vanessa will reveal that or if he didn't. But he's not the type of guy that sits quietly and waits. He's a writer. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he had some thoughts on what it might be to go into the Hall of Fame. It's like the late, great Jimmy V said, today is going to make us think, make us laugh, make us cry. It's going to be one hell of a day. Yep. All right, uh, more to come on Access. Anthony Davis with the announcement of 2021's class. It will be a full weekend tribute to basketball's best. We start today with the Hall of Fame Awards Gala. Please welcome your host for tonight's show, Lisa Salters. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Enshrinement Tip-Off Celebration and Awards Gala. For the treasured members of the Hall of Fame family, it has been far too long since the last time that you guys all got together. And I must say, you look fantastic. And not just from the waist up, like on that Zoom stuff. You look great from head to toe. Lena Horne's daughter, author Gail Buckley, wrote, Family faces are magic mirrors. Looking at people who belong to us, we see the past, the present, and the future. And for me, it is an honor and a privilege to even be in this room with all of you this evening. So much of the history of the game is right here. I grew up like most of you loving the game of basketball. I played point guard at Penn State. Well, I was on the team. I really didn't play all that much, but that's beside the point. But I grew up loving basketball. And in Philadelphia, I was a diehard 76ers fan. I hated the Boston Celtics, especially Kevin McHale. And then I grew up and found out that Coach McHale is one of the nicest guys on the planet. I didn't particularly care for the Lakers either. <laughs> and then I ended up living in LA for 12 years. I covered the Lakers just about every weekend for ESPN on ABC. And I now consider Magic Johnson and pretty much the entire Lakers family to be my friends. <laughs> There's four time WNBA Finals MVP Cynthia Cooper, Muffet McGraw who led Notre Dame to two national championships. She's here with us. Much love and respect to both of you ladies. And of course, the doctor, Julius Irving, is in the house. <laughs> Dr. J, thank you for bringing a championship to Philadelphia in 1983. Uh, but Dr. J is not the only doctor here tonight. Let's not forget Dr. Shaquille O'Neal. who earned his doctorate in 2012. Shaq, as you know, is a big believer in continuing education, uh, which is why he and D. Wade are so fortunate to now have Candace Parker on set with them because she takes them to school every Tuesday night on TNT. Now, before we get to the handing out the awards portion of this evening, it's time to meet some of the stars of this very special weekend, the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame Class of 2020. In addition to enshrinement this weekend, these legends of the game had to wait a little longer than usual to receive their Hall of Fame rings and jackets as well. But that wait is over tonight. So without any further ado, let's get this gala going with the first group of honorees to be introduced. 
This first group includes three students of the game who learned their lessons well and would find great success in passing on that knowledge. She joins Hall of Famers Pat Summit and Gino Oriema as the only NCAA women's basketball coaches in history to win three national championships and is the first person, man or woman, to win a national championship as a player, as an assistant coach, and as a head coach. An Olympic gold medalist in 1984 who was elected by the Women's Committee, presenting her Hall of Fame jacket and her ring is her daughter, Mackenzie Fuller. Congratulations, Kim Mulkey. He was a four-time National Coach of the Year and the first coach in history to lead four different schools to the NCAA tournament. He guided 12 teams to the Sweet 16, had six appearances in the Elite Eight, and made three trips to the Final Four. Elected by the North American Committee in April of 2020, he sadly passed away just a month later. Tonight, he is represented by his sons, Scott and Steve, Eddie Sutton. He spent 34 consecutive seasons with the Houston Rockets organization, first as a player, then later as an assistant coach, and finally as their head coach. He's the only person in NBA history to score 10,000 points as a player, and then to win 500 games and two championships as a coach. Elected by the North American Committee and receiving his jacket and ring from his daughter Nicole, Never underestimate the heart of a champion, Rudy Tomjanovich. <laughs> Let's have one more round of applause for Kim Mulkey, Eddie Sutton, and Rudy Tomjanovich. Named to honor the legendary broadcaster who served as president of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame for seven years, the Kurt Gowdy Awards recognize members of both the electronic and print media for outstanding contributions to the game of basketball. The 2020 Gowdy Award winner for print media also happens to be a big TV guy today as well, but it was his brilliant work over three decades at the Washington Post that earned him the reputation as one of the best deadline writers in American newspapers. And Michael Wilbon was never shy about sharing his opinions while working the NBA beats. 